receive today. Don't be overly distracted. The message that we're going to receive today is important. It is uh, not a difficult, it's, it's not an easy message, I might say. Um, some are gonna receive it in the spirit in which it is given. Some are going to resist it, but it's time. Yes, come on it's a message that's time. Uh, it, it's timely, glory to God. So I hope that you will tune in with your inner ear and allow yourselves to just be empty today so you can be filled with what is truly going to be imparted to you by the spirit of God. So sit back and get comfortable and we are going to uh, get right into it. We're not going to hold you long. Glory to God. Good afternoon, Sister Medina. We see you from Atlanta, Georgia. We're not going to hold you long today. Uh, good afternoon, Brother Troy, all the way from Lancaster, South Carolina. Is there anything good that can come out of Lancaster? I had a good friend that lived and came out of Lancaster, and it seemed like she was going to a funeral every month. And I said, is there anyone left in Lancaster? And in these little towns, we find that, you know, because there's not much to do to stimulate, there seems to be a lot more violence in little towns that are you know, scarcely inhabited than there are sometimes in metropolitan town. But <laughs> Brother Troy said, your brother, I know that's right. That is what is good in Lancaster, South Carolina. But well, glory to God. Thank you all for faithfully tuning in. And those of you who are connecting to us via YouTube, please hit the bell, subscribe, let others know. The beauty of YouTube is that if you miss a service. If you miss something because you're working, people work on Sundays and you got to do what you have to do to maintain your family and everything. But right. you can always go back on YouTube and put A-M-E-W TV, all caps into the space bar. And guess what? Poof, we'll pop right up. And so anything that we have taught about, anything that we have uh, preached on that you've missed, that you want to go back over, principles, scriptures, all of that can be yours if you will tune in to YouTube. And if someone is curious, and you know, I talk to people all the time through my business, out in the marketplace, it just, it, it never uh, ceases to amaze me how you can connect with people in just the most common ways. Um, I always tell them, go up on YouTube, check us out so that you know who we are and what we are about and then pray. And if God says, you know what, this is a place that you need to continue to stay connected to. You need a teaching ministry. You need to be taught the word of God. You need to be able to receive instruction, then continue to join us. And we make it easy because you can join at noon. You know, even the groundhogs, the birds, the bees, they're up before noon. You can do anything by 12 o'clock. So I remember being a part of a thriving, diverse ministry where they even had to have service on Saturday at 4 p.m. because people just began to connect in such a mighty way. So brothers and sisters, the word is powerful. And it will change your life if you allow it to. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and get started because I'm going to have to labor in this word. I want you all to hear the spirit of the Lord speaking and know that it's coming from a place of genuine love, of obedience. I have to give it to you all the way the spirit of the Lord instructs me to give it to you. Sometimes I don't know how he's going to twist and turn and, and where he's going to take me. He gives me some word. He gives me a sentence and poof, you know, there is an impartation that someone that is on the line today, someone that's sitting before me, there are people sitting before me that you can't see are going to need to hear the word. So tune in. Let everything else that's going on in your life take a back seat 
This may be your one opportunity to feed yourself spiritually. And you don't know, brothers and sisters, what is going to be waiting for you later on today, next week. You don't know. Because I tell you all the time, we think we're in control. That's the greatest illusion on planet Earth, that we can control something. You see, God is in control. He's the author. He's the finisher of all of our faith by Christ Jesus. He's the builder, the master builder. He does everything. Glory to God. If you have your microphones open, please close them so that we don't hear anything that you wouldn't want us to hear, you know, um, and we don't want any distractions unnecessarily. Amen. Amen. That's just a little bit of housekeeping. But Pastor Ricky is going to come up and usher us into our service today with a word of prayer. I'm going to ask you, glory to God, to raise, um, to bow your heads and just get your minds and hearts ready to receive today. Amen. Amen. We thank yes. God for the day. We thank God for being here. Yes, Lord. Uh, we, you. like me and my wife, we say we listen to that sound we never would have made it. You know what I'm saying? I would have lost my mind and all kind of stuff back in the day. Mm -hmm. Didn't for Jesus. Day. We all know that we are here because of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So everybody's bowing our heads. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you this morning. We want to give you the honor and the glory, Father God. We recognize that the things that goes on around the world, but you keep a head of protection around us every day. Yes. You allow us, Father. To get, to get up in the morning and see our family, play with our kids, and Lord, to, to, to fellowship with you and fellowship with others. To today, we give you the honor today, Father God. I want to bless the people that's online today, Father God, that you would bless their house right now where they at. Then something is going on in their mind and need help spiritually, physically, and financially. So today is the day to receive what you need. In the mighty name of Jesus, as the Pastor, speak the word today, Father God. Let it pierce her heart today. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I pray that the word of truth will go into your inner hearing, your innermost being. Glory to God. If you agree with this prayer that Pastor Ricky has put before us, please indicate so in the chat, in the comments, whatever platform you're listening to us today. And indicate so by saying amen. Amen simply means it is so. We're sealing something when we say amen. We're sealing our petition. We're sealing our prayer. I cannot wait till it's time for us to do our series on the Holy Spirit. Something that is going to bless everyone if you can receive it. We're going to tear down some of the old religious, traditional mm -hmm. ideas about the Amen. spirit of the Lord, because this is the year as we've come out of one series, New Beginnings, and we're getting back to the basics right now. We recognize and realize that just because you perceive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior doesn't mean that you understand all that you're entitled to, what that really means, and what you need to do to tap into your real true self, your power, your authority. Many of us go through our entire lives. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, I see it. They go through their entire lives living beneath the promises. And the only thing that they can look toward is death, the transition from this life to eternity. I want you all to get familiar with that word, eternity. Because the Father, our God, is the God of eternity. Glory to God. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's who he is. He is the God of eternity. You have no idea what eternity is because you've never experienced anything. Eternal. Even in geometry. We learn a couple of things. We learn that there is a ray. A ray has a beginning and then it goes out to infinity. It doesn't stop, but it does have a starting point and then it shoots out. But, in, but eternity 
It's forever. We don't have a concept of forever, really. We understand it intellectually, but we don't have a practical understanding of forever because we've never forever anything. You know, just as an aside, we understand the Valentine's is happening on Monday. And I love these holidays too, but I also recognize that you're supposed to experience and exhibit love to your family, to your significant others, to your children. You're supposed to do that every day. God is love and we are in God through Jesus Christ. So, so are we, we're love buddies. We're love machines. We have that capability, but it has to be unlocked because while we're here in this earth realm, we are bombarded by the things of this world. Carnality is simply a word for the things of this world. If you are only a carnal minded person, that means you are only consumed, interested in and operating in the things of this world. But when you become a born again believer, a resurrected spirit by Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Emmanuel, you see, when you become a resurrect, what does it mean to be resurrected? That means you've been raised from the dead. It's crazy. But in the kingdom, without Christ, we're told by the word of God that we are dead. <laughs> you know, by definition, that means we're like zombies. We think we're alive, but we're the walking dead. I'm a deadhead. I love that whole series, The Walking Dead. I was there from the beginning. Don't watch it much anymore because it's been going on and on. It's like decades. <laughs> but in the beginning, I was a true deadhead. We did not miss an episode. It was amazing, but that's who we are without being born again by the spirit. Amen. And you say, well, how can I be dead and alive? Well, we're talking about spiritual things. My brother, my sister, we're not talking about uh, dead in the sense of the world. There is a spiritual language. There are spiritual definitions. There are spiritual enlightenments and ways of living that we are just not raised to operate in. And so that's why it's so important that even though it's okay to be stirred in your flesh, we love good music, good gospel music. I was dancing a jig this morning to Marvin Sapp's Never Would Have Made It. That's all well, fine and good. It reminded me of how far God has brought me in my life. But we need to be taught too, brothers and sisters. You need to understand who you are. Nobody gets under the wheel of an 18-wheeler who has not been trained in how to operate that piece of equipment. Nobody drives a forklift without a certification. It's dangerous. You're doing something in the blind. The Winter Olympics has been going on. Nobody is going to go down the ski slopes without understanding the perils, without understanding all the things that could happen if they don't have on proper equipment, if they don't use proper technique. Nobody can do gymnastics. My goodness, I can't wait. That's one of my favorite events. But if you don't know what you're doing, you break your neck. Somebody watch live, you dead, you dying from breaking your neck, doing all those somersaults and flips and twists and turns, the contortions that they do with their body, their body becomes an instrument. Amen. Even if you are a dancer, a ballerina, I read somewhere that Beyonce dances sometimes until her toes bleed. Ballerinas have that same situation because they are using the strength of their bodies to twirl, to leap, to do all of these things. But you got to know what you're doing. They train. Glory to God. They train in preparation. As we watch these athletes, the best of the best of the best on the gridiron today. If you don't know what you're doing, 
You can get your neck broke. You can break your leg. All kinds of things can occur. But they train. They understand the game that they're playing. They understand every little jot and tittle of that game. But it's amazing to me. I am blown away and I was one of those people. So I'm talking about myself at one time. I'm not that person today. I can make that statement. I am learning, but I am not that person that actually believed that all we had to do was receive Jesus Christ as Lord and then go about our lives like nothing supernatural, miraculous had happened. I was one of those people. And then we began to, to you know, say the slogans and we look like we got it. Uh, you know, all of that foolishness. And then the enemy comes, killing our children, stealing our resources, devouring us slowly with sickness and disease, eroding our minds with depression and oppression. And we're looking around like, what, what is going on? You know, you didn't learn. You didn't learn what happened to you. You didn't learn what it truly meant. This is not a knock on pastors or anybody else. It is just a call to examine what we're really talking about in these pulpits. What is the end game? To go out into all the nations. Talking about whom? The one who saves. The one who can pluck you out of the hand of the enemy and ensure your eternal forever destination. I was thinking the other day, I said, Father, if you do not answer another prayer for me, I realize that you have blessed me beyond measure. Because I get to avoid an eternal punishment. Yeah. I am no longer the walking dead. I am no longer the damned and the condemned. Amen. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I know my eternal destination. And so I am empowered now. Where I can live my life. Sky is the limit. I no longer think that I can't be a thing or do a thing because of, you know, I'm a woman or because of my race or because of my culture or because of my education or because of my economic standing. So all my prayers are already answered. Because faith is believing in the now, not when you get it, you get it now. Yeah. The moment you believe you have. It. Yeah. 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 That's part of your training, brothers and sisters. That's why you should be tuning in. So you can learn who you are and how you can operate and what Christ died to give you. <laughs> now, in the spirit of Black History Month, I want to talk about something that is needed right now. It's necessary. What does Jesus say? What does the word of God tell us about diversity? What does the word of God say about it? As believers, we should ask ourselves that question. Not what the politicians say. Not what your great, great granddaddy said. Not what your mama and daddy say. But when you become a believer, a disciple in the makings, following Jesus Christ, you should ask yourself, what does my father through the spirit of the Lord say? 
When the world is doing something, as believers, we should turn to the word of God. What does Jesus say? Hit that thing for me, glory to God. Because I feel the presence of the Father. Some of you are going to receive this word. Some of you may not. It's okay. Because we don't care what man thinks. We care what the Father thinks. And truth is sometimes hard to digest. But the word of God says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. So we're going to roll up our elbows. We're going to roll up our sleeves, get some elbow grease and get to work today. Because there is a true pestilence in the land, not just in this country, but in the world. There are wars and rumors of wars because somebody decided that this group over here was less than this group over here. You see. And where are the people of God? Where is the salt and the light of this dying, dark world? Where do we stand as a body? So we're going to get some facts today in the word. That's, that's how we do it. We stand on the word of God. We don't stand on what we think. We don't stand on what the politicians say, because they say a lot. I call them the talking heads, the bobbleheads. They'll say anything to get your vote. And then they'll get in office and do whatever they want to do. Every time, it's like, you know, bait and switch, smoke screen and mirrors. So I've just made up my mind. I'll do what I need to do based on the word of God. So we don't advocate or promote any one party up in here. We advocate and promote what the word of God says. And so you pray about it and then you line them up with the word of God. And if you feel like they line up with principles, then you go cast your vote. That's the best advice I can give you on that one. Glory to God. But I'm going to tell you something. And I want you to hear me, hear me real, real good. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ and a racist at the same time. That's an oxymoron. It don't fit. And yet, many have tried to do that. Now, I'm not just talking to white folks. I'm not talking to any particular group because racism is in every single group of people. It's in the Latino culture. It's in the African-American culture. It's in the African culture. It's in the Caucasian, European, Anglo-Saxon culture. It's in the Asian culture. Everybody has a little bit of that devil lurking in their hearts. Black History Month. We should celebrate all cultures. You should know about all cultures. How can you go out into all the nations and you don't know anything except for your own culture? This is one nation. The Bible said nations in plural. How is it, you know, as I was going out, uh, you know, looking for the little Valentines and different things, how is it we can accept diversity of flowers, diversity of clothing, diversity of foods, The Super Bowl will be packed with a diversity of people. We can come together around that sport. Glory to God. Nobody's going to say, wait a minute, you're black. You can't sit next to me. No, if they are a fan of the L.A. Rams or a fan of the Bengals, they're going to all be yelling in unison for the team that they promote. Why can we have unity at the Super Bowl and can't have it in life? Where they do that at? You got to know that that's a spirit of crazy. So what does the word of God say? Summer, not Christ says, you cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ and a racist. I make that statement because that's in my heart. I believe that. I don't see how those two can be connected. You can't do it. And the word of God is going to back me up. Y'all turn with me 
You know not to come to my meeting without your Bibles, your swords. Turn with me to Galatians. It is in the New Testament of God. Chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 18. I'm going to go through these quickly because I got four scriptures that I want you to write down. You're going to put your own eyeballs on them after this service has concluded. I want you to chew on it, meditate on it, eat it. Get it in your spirit. Why? Because if you've been wrestling with that thing, it is going to be a stumbling block to you being who you're supposed to be in Jesus Christ. You're not going to be able to spread the gospel if you don't get this thing out of your flesh and out of your heart and out of your spirit. And I don't care who you are. Glory to God. Galatians, C-O-L-O-S-S-I-A-N-S. For those of you that aren't acquainted with reading your Bible on a regular basis. Starting at verse 18. This is a description of who Jesus Christ is. We got to establish that first. Wednesday night, we talked about why do we even need to know about this dude, Jesus. So this is another description of Christ. He is, I'm going to start in verse 17. He is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. So he's the glue. He's the super glue. Glory to God. And he is the head of the body, the church. So Jesus Christ is top dog over the church. All things have been created through him and for him. He, verse 17, is before all things. That correlates with he's the alpha, he's the omega. He's the first, he's the last. He's the beginning, he's the end. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Glory to God. Verse 18 again, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. I'm reading from the NIV version. Your version may say it a little differently. That's okay. That's cool. Get the meat of this word. Establish in your heart who Jesus Christ is. He said he is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. We just talked about the fact that apart from Jesus Christ, you are dead. You are like the zombies in the walking dead. I don't care how cute you are. I don't care how good you look. If your spirit man is not resurrected through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Bible calls you dead. Goes on to say, so that in everything, he might have the supremacy. Jesus Christ is supreme. He's the head. Verse 19. Hear this word by the spirit for God was pleased to have all of his fullness dwell in him so what that means is Jesus Christ while being in the form of a man was fully God you have the word to stand on God filled him up with himself I wanted to establish this first before we get into the next word of scripture. I am one that links things together. This is how the spirit of the Lord comes at me. And sometimes you're going to get a lot, but it's imperative that you go back and review these scriptures. That you say, Lord, give me the revelation that I can use it in my life. Because this is food 
for your innermost being. And this is training so that you will know that you know that you know when the spirit of life is presented to you. On, telling you who you are not because of X, Y, and Z. You're going to have a foundation rooted and grounded in the word of God where you'll be able to say, no, that's not right. Let me tell you what the truth of the matter is. You're going to go back into your sphere of influence at your kitchen table, on your job, in your business, at your school, and be a light. You got to catch this revelation now. We are establishing that Jesus is the head of the church, that Jesus is the head of everything, that Jesus is supreme, and that the fullness of God is dwelling within Jesus. So if you're looking for God, you can hum that lie till the cows come home. But if you are looking for God, and that's not a knock on my Muslim brothers and sisters, this word says, that the fullness of God is indwelt within Jesus Christ. You can chant all you want. I was speaking in my heavenly language this morning, and the Spirit of the Lord says, You know, when they are chanting, that's what they're doing. They're trying to unlock their innermost being. But the Holy Spirit is something we receive automatically when we've been resurrected through Jesus Christ. Amen. Without Jesus, you are not going to get where you're trying to go in your connection with the Father. Mm. Verse 20. And through him, Christ, to reconcile to himself. God is operating through Christ to reconcile. Reconcile means to be reconnected. That means that I'm getting back together with something. If you've lost contact with one of your closest friends and through Facebook, you reconnect and you begin to have a relationship again, you've been reconciled. Amen. To your friend. Mm -hmm. Facebook was the connector. God is saying that Jesus Christ is the connector. He says, through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. The father is making a point through the apostle Paul that he utilized Jesus Christ to bring back to himself his children. All things in earth and in heaven have been reconciled back to God through the blood of Jesus on the cross. I have to establish that because when I begin to give you my next point and statement. I want you to understand why I say you cannot be a racist and a disciple at the same time. You can try it, but you will have no power. You will not be able to lay hands on the sick and see them healed. You will not have the power and the authority in the earth realm to change the heart of men and women so that they can be reconciled back to the Father through Jesus Christ. Why? Because racism, any separatist ideas that you have, because you don't like somebody that's different from you, it's not of God because God is love. God is reconciliation. So if I don't like my sister, because her skin is darker than mine, we have colorism amongst African-Americans who will look their nose down on sisters and brothers because they're darker. Mm -hmm. I am in error. If my Latino brothers and sisters feel like they can't do uh, 
business or interact with you because of the color of your skin, they're an error. If my Asian brothers and sisters feel like, hey, I, you know, I can't have a real relationship with you because you're of another culture, you're an error. But we love Jesus. We love Jesus. Truth. I love talking about the contributions of my brothers and sisters that are part of my race and culture, but I'm also equally excited to learn about contributions from other races and culture. Because he said, nations go out into the nations. Glory to God. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Woo, glory to God. I'm telling y'all, if y'all are, are receiving, if you're understanding how crucial this is to know, indicate so by putting an amen, send me a heart, raise your hand, give me a hand clap. Because I'm telling you something, if you've been guilty of these things, this is going to help you today. Because now you're going to have the truth. You can do what you want with the truth, but you need to know it. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18. This is a teaching ministry. Okay? You need to learn some things. And I hope I put the right things in here. Glory to God. <sighs> Verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Man blowing y'all, so it's blowing my face. I really want y'all to hear this. And the enemy don't want you to know it. Don't want you to know it. Verse 18. And this is from God, who reconciled us. There's that word again. To himself through Christ. And gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God, verse 19 was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. What am I talking about today? The message of reconciliation. The message of unity, the message that will free you from looking at people as though they are somehow not worthy because they are different. The message that will free you from seeing diversity and inclusion is dirty. This is part of the plan of God. He said he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. That means to be reconciled. That means we need to come together. We need to know the truth so that we can teach others the truth. We are fighting something that has already been defeated by the blood of Jesus. I have a vase of flowers here. They are so beautiful. No one would argue that. But the minute we see couples coming together from different races, we have some type of reaction. I never forget my father who did a lot of traveling in his time in his corporate career. He went to Seattle, Washington. He said, if I could live somewhere other than South Carolina, it would be Seattle, Washington. And I remember saying to daddy, well, why? What, what did you like about Seattle? I've never been to Seattle. I understand some things about it. It's 
rainy place. It's a progressive place. There's a, a huge mall there. I think they call it Mall of America is there. There's quite a few things there. There's the Space Needle there. Thank you, Pastor Ricky. There's some things in Seattle, Washington. Also, there's a lot of bar uh, baristas, coffee makers, and things of that nature. But guess what my father said to me? He said the reason why he loved Seattle, Washington was because of the pairings of the people. You can see an Eskimo with someone. You can see, an, you know, you, you, you can see an Indian with someone. You can see people, diversity of peoples coming together in these unlikely pairs. But if you never step outside of your comfort zone, you don't see things. On my bucket list, before I close my eyes to go to be in eternity with my father, I want to go to Singapore. Why Singapore? I cannot speak a word of Mandarin. But there's a fusion of foods there. A lot of your top chefs from all over the world go to Singapore to learn how to fuse different flavors and spices together. Not to mention the fact I love Pastor Joseph Prince. And I want to sit in his church and hear him up close and personal because he teaches a lot about grace and redemption. And he breaks down the word of God in such a way that it stirs me in my spirit. Sister Medina says she's going as well. There will be a seat on the plane for my sister Medina. Listen to me, folks, and hear me well. The father said in the word of God, we just read it, that we have been committed to the message of reconciliation. Again, I made a statement. You cannot be a racist, meaning against other people because of their culture, their color, their education, their religion, their sex, their hair, their clothes, where they live, their money, and call yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go back and read 2 Corinthians 5. Verses 17, 17 through 19 for yourself. But right now, I want you to turn back with me to 1 John. I'm laying a foundation because you're not going to be with me long today. So I got to hit you right where you live. 1 John. Woo, thank you, Jesus. I need my fan, but it blows my word. First John, that's after Hebrews. You're going back towards the end of the Bible. The Spirit of the Lord showed me these things. I mean, I was like, my God, it's right here. It's right here. You cannot use the word of God any way you please. It's here. The father says the grass may wither and the flowers fall, but my word will remain forever. So excited. I can't get it out. First John chapter four. I just got excited studying this. I was like, my God, we have permission to love anyone we choose. We have permission to talk to folks that don't look like us don't talk like us we have permission to go out into the nation to do what reconcile them back to their daddy through jesus christ verse 12 check this out apostle john says no one has ever seen god but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Did he say if we just live, if we just love the folks that look like us? Is there a footnote in there that says we only love those that come from our immediate family? We can only love Americans. Verse 12. First John chapter four and verse 12. No one has ever seen God. 
Is that a true statement? Yeah. Even Moses had to be shielded. He basically saw God pass by his shadow. You don't get to see God until you shed these earthly bodies, brothers and sisters. That's the way that works. Even Jesus Christ had to shed his flesh to go back home. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Amen. Verse 13. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit, capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. And we have seen and testified. John is saying we have seen and testified. He's talking to the people of his time who actually walked with Christ, saw Christ. He says, and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. Woo! That's good news. See, if I was telling y'all how to go find a million dollars somewhere and do it quick and easy so that you didn't have to put no elbow grease in it, everybody would be standing to attention. I'm telling you about the one that can give you everything. And the greatest gift that he gives you is the gift of eternal life. Because see, in hell, everybody's the same color. Burnt. Yeah. In hell, everybody's on the same level, miserable. The Bible says there'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Every burned victim I've ever seen, regardless of their race, color, or creed, they are burnt. Skin keloid over, face twisted and stretched. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus, the savior of the world. You're so consumed with the things of now that you feel like there is not a forever place for you to go. That's a trick of the enemy. You're consumed with your flesh and what you want and how you feel. Meanwhile, you got an uncle or an aunt that is twisted and bitter in their hearts, refusing to receive the truth of Christ. On their way to hell with gasoline draws on and you have the answer to set them free. But you've been taught to do everything but be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm going to heaven. That's enough. The devil is alive. We've been called to commit. He said the message of reconciliation. We are committed to that message. He said, go into all the nations, baptizing in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your life looks like what you believe, brothers and sisters. You don't want to roll up your sleeves and get to work. You want to be comfortable. You want God to just float it to you from heaven. God did his job. He walked on the earth in the form of Jesus. He shed blood. And he died for you. I say his work is finished. He's sitting, the word says. Waiting for the appointed time that no man knows the day or the hour when he's coming here to sit and judge. It ain't going to be but two types of people when he judges. The damned and the redeemed. The just and the unjust. What line 
kind are you going to be in? My friends, my brothers, my sisters, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Zoom, what line are you going to be in? You can lie to your neighbor. You can lie to your brother. You can lie to your spouse. You can lie to your significant other. You can lie to your mommy and your daddy. But you cannot hide what's in your heart. The father sees you. I had to wrestle with this devil myself. We don't study Black History Month so we can be angry with somebody. We're celebrating a contribution of a people to this nation. We should have a Indian month. We should have a Viking month. We should have an Asian month. I want to know about everything. Because I'm a child of God. And I want to be able to reach souls and change hearts, regardless of the bodies that I find them in. This is what we come together for. Glory to God. He said, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. Verse 13, he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen, John said, we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. The world, not the United States, the world. If anyone, verse 15, acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them. And they in God. And so, verse 16, we know and rely on the love God has for us. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Glory to God. And now, let me paint this picture. I'm a person that sees in pictures and visions. And when I read this last word of scripture, I saw it. And I said, hallelujah. Confirmation. Turn to the book of Revelations, chapter 7. This is your last scripture. Book of Revelations was also given to the apostle John when he was in exile. He didn't die uh, a gruesome death like the other disciples. They exiled him. Why? Because I believe that Jesus Christ needed a witness who would write and tell it the way it was told to him by the Spirit. So we would have a record of things to come, things that will be. We receive this by faith. The angel of the Lord is describing end times to the apostle John and talking to him about gathering up the remnant from his bloodline. 12,000 people from each of the 12 tribes. I said to Pastor Ricky, I would love to know which of the 12 tribes I come from. There's a remnant that will be gathered up from the 12 tribes. They will be taken out as witnesses after the time of great and terrible tribulation. See, folks that don't believe in Jesus Christ will be left here to suffer seven years 
the book of Revelation tells us, of hard times and tribulation. But he also painted a picture of what it would be like in that time when Jesus Christ is going to sit on the earth. Verse 9 says, we in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. Paul, uh, John said, after this, I looked. And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. What caught me and resonated so deep in my spirit was the fact that the multitude could not be counted because they were from every nation, every tribe, every people, and every language. And someone, let me say this to my young African-American brothers and sisters who have decided that Jesus is just simply not for them. Because somewhere in the history of this country, as the plantation owner was doing his thing, he was also talking about a white Jesus. And so Jesus now has been coupled with oppression. Men can take any good thing and make it raggedy and ugly to suit their agenda. You cannot put Christ in a box based on how men have mishandled, misused the gospel. Do not be deceived, brothers and sisters. We're talking about spirit, not flesh. Some of you just want to latch on to the fact of the Bible saying his hair was like wool. His color like bronze. Oh, that means Jesus was black. No, he looked like the men of his day. The Bible also said he was ordinary. He was nothing that you would want or desire. He came in a form so that the people, the civilization of that time could receive him. See how the spirit of division and racism has a zeroed in on color, not spirit. He was spirit. And he embodied the fullness of God. We read that for ourselves. It's not what Pastor Summer is saying. It's what the word of God is saying. And on that day, there would be a multitude without number from every nation and tribe and people and language. This is the power of Christ. He cannot be reduced to just what he physically looks like so that you can have an excuse to throw him in the trash, sideline him in your life, Not do what the word of God says we're supposed to be doing. Even Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. Valentine's Day, Black History Month, Super Bowl Sunday, whatever. Every day is a day for a true disciple of Christ to celebrate every day. A true disciple of Jesus Christ will show love. Study, study, 
train your spirit, renew your mind, receive the truth. Stop living beneath your inheritance. And beneath who the word of God says you are. Listen, as you begin to grow, as you begin to elevate, as you begin to evolve, as the truth begins to mature you and set you free, you're going to lose some people. Everybody won't be able to come along with you for the ride. If you feel that the things in this world are more important than your eternal destination and who you truly are inside if you just want to relegate yourself to just what you look like and what the world thinks about you then continue to live your life surviving not thriving being depressed and oppressed making excuses for why you can't be what you're supposed to be this is our manual for life. This is how we learn to live and to thrive. This is how we get wealth. This is how we unlock our gifts. This is how we understand who we are and what we are capable of doing. Bishop talked about Nellie Rose. An African-American woman who tapped into her inner gifts, trying to get rid of migraine headaches and things, and took ordinary mundane things and turned them into beautiful art. There are so many people, because see, when you become reborn of the spirit, you have the fullness of God dwelling in you. So you are not dead. You are not a nothing burger. You are not incapable of doing great and mighty things. I don't care how young you are, I don't care how old you are. If you still have the breath of God in you and your eyeballs open up, God has use of you. You can speak into someone's life Don't be afraid, brothers and sisters. Fear is false evidence appearing real. You should have the boldness to speak to anyone at any time, regardless. When we go out and we minister to the homeless, I will not forget the old white gentleman with a blue twinkling eye, dirty and dusty but singing to the top of his lungs about the goodness of God. I handed him the microphone and he sang. He blessed my soul. To stand us up two by, two by two, it looks like, hey, one's doing better than the other. No, he had the joy of the Lord, even in his circumstances. This is what the spirit of the Lord will do for you. Will make you grateful and thankful regardless to what's going on in your life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, of course, this is the end of our message. And we're just so grateful, brothers and sisters. God has given us glimpses of where this ministry is going. We are a ministry without walls. We know that there are souls out there and everybody who connects with this ministry has a gift locked up inside of you, has a purpose. And you must, you must get curious about that, glory to God. Whatever you're feeling today, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling hopeless, the answers are in the word of God or just get quiet and pray and say, Lord, show me. Why am I here, Father? Why did you create me? And why did you bring me into this time? I thank God for having me be born 
in modern times. I can be anything I choose to be. So many went before us and died, shed blood. Don't waste any more of your time, brothers and sisters. You need to know Jesus Christ, just like you know the stats for your favorite football team. Just like you know how to operate on your job. You need to know Christ that way because he'll take you places that no man, no system here on earth can take you. He's a disruptor of everything, but there is a requirement. You must yield to his spirit and you must submit and give him control and authority. I would rather be a slave to Jesus Christ than continue to be a slave to the limits of my mind. There is more, brothers and sisters. Now, my sister Tori and my host, she's going to come up. And she's got something for us today. She's already put in the chat the ways to give. We've only been together a short period of time, brothers and sisters, a little over an hour. You'll have the rest of your day to eat your wings, your pizza. I'm going to eat some. The day is young. So let's take these next five minutes or so. We're going to sign off in a great way. Tori, come on up here. Glory to God. Look back over those scriptures, brothers and sisters. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Summer. God bless you all. We don't take for granted that you're here with us. And we can't see what you look like, but guess what? doesn't even matter. We see your heart. That's the most important thing. And this week, uh, no, actually, let me go a few weeks back. Our, my job has a Bible study put on by the owner. Mr. Andy Long has decided that he wants to do Bible study for people at work. He says there's not enough opportunities, and I want everybody to Put God first. If you have work to do, if you have something that's pressing, I don't care what it is. Come. Come and spend this time to talk about God. Talk about these things because nothing else really matters. And he said, I don't understand why more people don't do that. And I thought, that's true. Why, why don't we? Because every time I speak, Spend time with God. Every time I take a moment and reflect, I'm always blessed. I'm always enriched. And there's something that is so great about it. Why wouldn't I want to do it more? Amen. So I said, I'm going to spend as much time as I can. I'm going to, I, I asked God, you know, there was this new thing that was put out, but it was only for iPhone people. Yeah. Only if I, I'm looking at my daughter because she's an iPhone. And I said, that's not fair. I want to be a part of it. But someone, actually, Miss Carolyn, my, my mentor, she sent me a message that allowed me to be a part of it. I said, thank you, Lord. I'm going to use this for you. So there is a prayer line that they have. And they discuss the Bible in seven or eight different languages. And I don't want to get in trouble, but while I was at work, <laughs> I was listening to these people from different countries, different languages, speaking the Bible in their own language. Do you know that? Bless me. Because I think about my little bubble and the people around me. Now my ears are hearing the language in Indian and in Hebrew in in a lady from Romania, it was beautiful. So I said, Lord, why wouldn't more people want that? But I can't do it for you. I can't 
make you want to experience it. And as Pastor Summer was talking about diversity, I said, Lord, mm -hmm. I've had to deal with some battles in my life because of how I look. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't wake up. I can't wake up one day and said, I'm going to be black today. I'm going to choose to be white. You know what? I even told some people I was Dominican. <laughs> and they believed it. People walk up to me and just blah, 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 and I say, I don't know what you say. Can you ask me first? But all my life I remember having a constant battle and struggle with the way that I looked and I had no control over it. I couldn't wake up and change, but I had to come to grips with God made me this way. I remember walking down the streets of Clemson, going from uh, from my classroom, and a car stopped, and I said, you never seen a light-skinned person before? I was so angry and so mad, and I let the way that I looked affect me internally. But I had to learn, like Pastor Summer was talking about, the scriptures that say God is in me. He made me this way for a reason. And it's not for me to say, well, God, are you sure you chose the right? Are you sure that I'm supposed, why can't I be a little darker? Why do I go out and people tell me, will you go to the beach? Make sure you get a tan before you come back. So we know you actually went. Make sure you do something to change the way that God made you. How awful. How awful would that make a young girl feel? As a teenager, you already struggle with this and that. School is attacking you with homework. People around you are the mean girls or whatever it is you may have. You don't need extra. I'm light-skinned. My brother was dark-skinned. We came from the same mother. And I, I remember... All the times that I looked at my mom and said, why do I have to be this way? But I know God has a reason. I know he will get the glory. I know there's millions of people in other cultures that I don't even see. I heard it. Them speaking in the language of God. Them praising God. The same God that we're talking about is in Egypt, is in India is in Venezuela. Doesn't matter. We can't think about what we look like or what, what small things are around us. I remember Apostle Ron Carpenter with Redemption. He said, do this. Put this right over your eyes. Now, what do you see? This. This is what you're focused on but you got to do this. Amen. Everything else opens up. Everything else becomes real because you stop focusing on one thing, on the problem thing, on the thing that has got you stuck. You got to move it out of the way. Move it out of the way so you can get what God has for you. If you stop looking, do you know how much collaboration, food, Pastor Summer talked about going to Singapore for food. We wouldn't have pizza. We wouldn't have uh, Chinese food. A lot of things, if, if we were hung up, I'm not gonna eat that because you look different. God bless the ones that came together and made the different unique items for us to taste Amen. and select. I just, I'm just so grateful. So I just wanted to share that. That was my message about diversity, how it's affected me. I know that I'm different, but we are all different. There's some things that I can't see that you have going on. You just happen to be able to see mine. I dreaded the question, what color are you? Because what difference does it make? <laughs> I would say, what if I tell you, will it change anything? No, I'm still going to be Tory. Amen. Amen. So let us get together. It is time to do the tithe and offering.
my most favorite time of the service because I get to give to the one that gave it to me anyway. It doesn't belong to me. And guess what? You can't take it with you. I wish you would try to put that statue in your grave with you. I remember listening to Ricky Smiley. He had a he had a little comedy strip about how the 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 grandmother was talking about her husband going into the grave and in the grave she wanted to put a radio she wanted to put some little debbie cakes just in case he woke up in some water if he got thirsty what if he wakes up she was worried about the wrong thing you can't take that he's not gonna get up you can't take that stuff with you let it go so give while you have the ability to give there's so many that want to and can't so, I don't know, Logan, my handsome sister, if you can pass around the tithe and offering letters. And oh, remember to name your seed. Put on it what you want it to do. You can command that thing to do exactly what you want it to do. God already knows, but sometimes it's the putting it down, the writing it down that makes it real. The writing it down that helps you to believe. And then you can remember, I named this seed and it happened. It came to pass. God hears your prayers. He knows everything we need. In Psalms, it says that we lack nothing. He gives us our daily bread. You may not have everything that you want, but you have everything that you need. Amen. So while we're preparing to tithe, I do want to talk about some of the things that we have going on. We're expanding, trying to get onto the social media platforms. And Pastor Summer asked, if you have something that you want to contribute to the church, your time, if you have expertise in technology, Lord knows everything that I do, he gives to me. I look up, YouTube is my best friend because I'm learning all the things that you've seen restream, you see it on Facebook, you see it on uh, Twitter. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not the master of those things, but God helps me to do it. Everything that I do, he has told me to do. I didn't make it up. I didn't make it up. So what can you be doing for the church? If you know a way to provide paintings, if you know a way to do do uh, clean up. If you know a service that you can provide, yeah, that's right, Pastor Medina, YouTube University. <laughs> it can teach you everything. But if you if you have something, reach out. Pastor Summer's email is amewredeemed at gmail.com. It's in the chat. Ask God what you can do because it is a a blessing to give. So if everyone's ready, we'll stand up and let me pray over your tithe and offering. You can't see it, but everybody in here is standing up and I see all the beautiful faces. So let us bow our heads. Lord, we thank you we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, for seeing fit to wake us up today. There's many that didn't wake up. I thank you for blessing me with life, with the ability to see, to hear, to speak, to walk and talk. We don't take it for granted. I pray over everyone's seat, Lord, that you would bless it the way that only you can, Lord, that they wrote down what you what they want, if they name their sea, Lord, you make it happen. You've already done it. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 And while we're standing up, let's get to our mantra. My, my handsome husband just put it in the chat. Thank you. It says Tori, but that's also me. <laughs> He's me. So if everybody's ready, repeat after me. The least of these, the least of these shall become a thousand. Shall become a, thousand. A, small one. a small one, a mighty nation. A mighty nation. I, the Lord, I, the Lord, will hasten it, will hasten it. In, its time. in its time. 
Amen. 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 You may be seated. I want to talk really quick about all the things that are going on. Of course, join our Telegram. I don't post that stuff for me. I know what time. I've got my calendar set with the time to get up at 8 a.m. for the prayer line, 10 a.m. for Bishop. Pastor Medina, she doesn't post it for herself. She sends emails faithfully. God bless her for the work that she does. Because I know a lot of times she doesn't get a thank you. So I know she does it not for us, but for the Lord. That's something that he gave her to do. But I just appreciate her so much for creating the flyers, for posting on Instagram, for posting on Telegram. Be a part of that. If you want to help with that, you can. We, If you're a willing vessel, no one can mm -hmm can't keep you from doing that. All you got to do is ask. So join us at 10 a.m. for with Bishop, 12 noon for our service. And then on Tuesdays is the call for the kings. Now, if you're not a king, get on there anyway so you can be a king. We need more men. We need more kings. Like Pastor Summer said, where are the believers? Where is the salt and the light? You got to get your confidence up. If nobody's telling you that you can, then you won't. If you're not telling you that you can, then you won't. And then on Wednesday night at 8 p.m. with Pastor Summer, she goes over the words we can eat another time. Thursday is for our queens. I'm there. I'll be there. You can message me in the chat. I will be there. And Bishop has done something special on Tuesdays and Thursdays for others to speak, mm -hmm. to open the door. How else can you learn other than listening to someone else's testimony? Mm -hmm. Now you can go through it. I could tell you to touch the stove and it'll be hot, but you may not believe me, mm -hmm. but I can guarantee because I say it, it's true, but you may have to find that for yourself. So listen to other people's testimony. You don't have to just hear from us. So those are all the things and then Amen for Pastor Medina, who teaches the youth every other Friday. I know you know some baby's kids that need to be on that line, that need a little more Jesus in their life, because all they hear is Shaquada and Shaniqua and Jabambe telling them not the ways of God. <laughs> Amen. But I just wanted to end on a happy note. Thank you all for being here again. We don't take for granted. God bless you for your obedience. We love you. And always remember that Jesus Christ is a more excellent way. And I'm going to ask my handsome husband to end the service for us. Amen. Go out and have a great